to get this family drove in from Miami. You had individuals driving, uh, com coming down from Toronto, the Virgin Island. We had individuals coming from all over and sadly they had to conduct their own investigation because no one uh, would listen to them. Despite the pleas from the family, the thing that was most upsetting was this sheriff's deputy told the family on a Saturday, if you don't hear from me by Tuesday, call us back. And that is just totally unacceptable. So they wanted the family to sit in the hotel room and wait to see if they were gonna hear back from me on Tuesday before they do something about it. And, and it just should not be like that. It is not proper protocol, uh, despite the sheriff representing that they did not have reasonable suspicion or probable cause uh, to detain this individual. I highly dispute that. There was enough information that was given by this family uh, where he could have, they could have detained this individual. They could have taken him down for questions. And I think if you see, watching the video, the questions that the family was asking him, they basically had this guy about to say something. So imagine if you had trained professionals asking him that question. So for seven days, this family, seven to eight days, this family had to go through pain that they would never be able to get rid of because so many people dropped the ball. If management from the Arden Villas would have come to this apartment complex when the family reached out and called them, if someone would have come out at three o'clock in the morning and checked that key fob, we would have known immediately that that individual had been in Mia's apartment so they would have had, at that point, they would have had probable cause to arrest him. So again, this was not taken serious at all. Uh, and we know, based on statements that have been given to us, that the, the sheriff deputy who was at the scene said clearly that this case is not a priority to us. We asked the question again, did he say that? And they were clear that he said that this case was not a priority. They asked him, did you dust the facilities, uh, the, the apartment, for fingerprints? They didn't do that. They didn't do anything that uh, uh, you would do in a basic investigation. And when this security guard did the things that these sheriff deputies should be doing, they simply laughed at him. And they did not even take the fingerprints uh, that he had gotten off the windows for them. So again, I think you are going to learn over the next few days or next few weeks, there is, very, there is more to this story. There is no one in Orlando who could stand up with a clear face and say that they know for a fact that there was only one individual involved in the disappearance of Mia. Nobody knows this. We don't know if this was some type of uh, activity that's been going on around Orlando for some, uh, quite some time. That's why it was so important to de detain this individual and not allow him to commit suicide. So we're going to take a few questions at this time. There will obviously there be no trial. Clear. What does justice look like for Mia? Justice for Mia, it's going to require that the sheriff's department takes accountability. They need to take full accountability. I think the sheriff needs to come up. He needs to look at that video and he needs to compare that video to everything that he learned about that morning and see if there are inconsistencies. And I think if there are inconsistencies, I think the sheriff owes it to people of Orlando to tell the truth. I know watching that interview just a short moment ago, he could not say whether what those officers uh, or the deputies did was proper. All he can say was that we need to conduct the further investigation. So again, I think uh, that would be justice. Justice for, for me and the family with be having laws changed. You heard us talk about the Mears Law. I mean, these students that are out protesting right now should be studying. They should be focusing on college life. They should be getting ready for a football game this weekend. But instead, they are out there demanding change. So when we see those type of change, uh, you know, then we will see some type of justice. But the only justice truly that this family can get for Mia is if Mia was gone home with them. That's the only justice that, that they can ever get. Darryl, you, you saw it with this investigation, the family is repeatedly saying, look in the car, in the hour of the day this gentleman was here. There were so many outliers of why this person should have at least been detained. In your legal opinion, 
did, did the sheriff's office miss the mark? Should he have called a supervisor? Is this is that the protocol? Because it seems like there are more than enough outliers to make a, a detention. At a minimum, a, a supervisor should have been called. One of the things, and we have not been able to confirm, but one of the things that we have heard is that those early morning shifts are the time of the, of the morning when they put their most inexperienced deputies uh, on the job. So based on that, there should have been a supervisor who should have been called. It's no question, when you saw that, that uh, the door had something blocking the entry, that was enough. I mean, that is just not common. She's missing. We've already said that Mia's missing. And now you see that there's a dresser that's blocking the entrance to that room. What more do you need? I mean, they had everything that they need to know that this was a crime scene. Do you foresee filing a lawsuit against the sheriff's office, the apartment, and how forthcoming do you think that that legal action can be? Well, I, I will tell you, and as we have always said from day one, everybody that had played a part in Mia's death are going to be held responsible. And how forthcoming? When do you think a, a time scale on what do you think that those filings could be made? I mean, I, it, it could be very soon, but again, we've said early on that our focus right now is on Mia. Our focus is um, having the family to properly grieve. And, and, and that's the focus this week is going to be about Mia and, uh, and the family. And that's, that's always been the number one priority. The timeline says, according to the Sheriff's Office, that after the family spotted that blanket when he went into the apartment, it says Castleberry PD stands by while Mia's family looks through the apartment with his permission, Did, which is fairly extraordinary. Did they, did he react to them? Did they find, I guess they didn't find what they had just seen him with? Any ideas how that all transpired then? I mean, it's very clear. And again, uh, he knew at this point that the family had, had been uh, questioning him and they knew where, where he lived, et cetera. So it, if he invites them in, he's inviting them in because he know that all the evidence that he had was no longer there. So again, uh, in these type of investigations, every second matters. Uh, and, and the time that they needed, uh, they just basically dropped the ball. Do you have any solid proof or evidence or tips that there is somebody else involved? What I do have solid evidence of, I don't know if someone else is involved. I don't think the sheriff knows if someone else is involved, but I, I do know that there are so many questions. When I walk into the apartment for myself and, and just looked at the window and, and, and looked how high it is off the ground, it's just, it's a lot of things that gives you some pause. I, I do know, uh, based on some conversations, that he was with a couple of individuals uh, during the day. So, again, we don't know, uh, but we're hoping that somehow we, we do find those answers. But this investigation is far, should be far from over. Have they given you any indication what may have happened to them? Have they talked to the family about any, anything that they think may have happened to her? Honestly, we wish that that's just something that we wish we did know, but we, we don't have those those type of details. At some point, did the case, did they close the case and reopen it? Well, from what we understood is that, or, or what I understood when I heard the sheriff's first press conference is basically that he said that nobody else is, was involved. So to make that comment tells me that the investigation was over. Now I'm hearing something totally different. I'm hearing now that they're going to continue with the investigation to, to find out what happened. Do you have any details about what they found on the second crime scene three months No, no, I don't have them. I have not gotten those those details yet. Uh, again, they haven't given us all the specifics about what is all was, was found. Darrell, I know a lot's happened in the last few hours here, but also when we met yesterday, you talked about possible litigation against Arnold Villas. Have you had a chance to look at a copy of Mia's lease? Because there are a lot of outliers in that lease about security protocols and measures here. And just wondering if that's something you've had a chance to look at. I know your protesters are out here. How do you guys proceed with knowing what the lease says? Well, again, the lease is deflection. What they put, what they're giving to the, the media is totally deflection. They, they're focusing on security. Our focus is on this guy having access to that, that key fob. So that's totally separate from the security issues. We agree that there are major security issues in this complex, uh, but we need to see the provision. We, what we want to see is the policy on dealing with that key fob, not the security issues, although that is very important, and that's what we need to see. Do, do you think they seem less contaminated because they don't continue with the procedures of the, of the sheriff? It's clear that the scene was contaminated uh, when they allowed the, the roommate to go inside of the apartment from that window to open the door. That should have never happened. What if 
there was still someone in that apartment, the, the roommate could have been harmed. When the deputy saw that that door was barricaded, there is no reason why he should allow that young lady to go into the apartment. He put her life in danger. So that, that just tells you how, how poorly this entire investigation was done. I mean, I need to know what uh, police protocol would authorize them to allow a young girl to go into an apartment when you see a door barricaded. What would allow that? Why didn't the deputy do that? Or why didn't he call somebody out to the scene immediately to say that this door is barricaded? I don't know if somebody else is in here. We need to get somebody out here immediately. That was not done. And the reason why it was not done, because as he told the security officer, this was not top priority. We don't know if they had a body cam video. I'm not sure if they're even one. That's one of the things that we are requesting, uh, whether there was body cam video, whether there was some type of dash cam video in his vehicle, we don't know. We have not gotten uh, any answer as to when we're going to have a final result. Uh, obviously, um, you know, because Mia was left uh, out for so long, uh, this is just not the ordinary autopsy that they had to conduct. So things are taking just a little longer than it ordinarily would. Uh, the family is here. Do any of them want to speak to us at all? No. What's I mean, the next step? I mean, again, as, as we said earlier, uh, the family is going to be grieving, uh, continuing their grieving. Uh, we're focus now on the, the funeral for, for Mia. That is what is most important. Uh, the family is already uh, starting a, a foundation in Mia's honor. Uh, and, and I think that is going to be something that you're going to hear about. Uh, that's going to be very important uh, for the family because they want to make sure that nobody ever has to go through what they experience. Uh, they're going to be looking at changes to how apartment complexes uh, uh, deal with uh, key fobs. Uh, also, they're going to be looking at procedures, how law enforcement officers deal with the investigation of a, of a missing person. Uh, I think this is something that has been swept under the rug for so very long. And, and sadly, uh, you see the support system that's here today. Think about the people who go missing who don't have that support system. Sadly, they just become a statistic. So the family has decided that they don't want Mia's death to be in vain. Sadly. It took the loss of Mia to bring attention to a, a very huge issue. I cannot tell you how many people who have contacted us over the last couple of days who said they had the very same experience at the Arden Villas. There are uh, several individuals had an experience with him at the prior uh, apartment complex that he was working at. So this is something that's not only gone on in Orlando, this is something that's gone on throughout the country and it, it just simply has to change. In the video, he makes the comment, Caballero, if I, if I was guilty, I wouldn't come out here, or something to that effect. Was the family who was on the scene surprised that he used the word guilty? Did that set off an alarm bell for anyone? I mean, the way we explain it, and I, I talked to the family about this, uh, I asked them, how did they know this guy had something to do with it? And, and honestly, the best way we were able to explain is that Mia was inside of them. I mean, she really, I mean, you look at a city as large as Orlando and all the people around, how would you know? And I mean, they just had that parent instinct, that intuition that this guy had something to do with it. And just from his question, I mean, the father was asking questions and he knew that something was not right. And uh, that is the thing that is so upsetting to the family, that they were able to get this information and, and the sheriff de uh, deputies refused. Uh, to take the information that they did. A family should not have to do their own investigation when uh, deputies are being paid to do that. Have you guys obtained any information on how many text messages he, text messages he has sent her in the time that they knew each other? We have not gotten any information uh, uh, at all. So uh, again, what we can tell you, and we have spoken to, to a number of individuals, this was something that was constant, that she was not interested in him. Uh, employees of, of the complex knew this and that he acted inappropriate. Uh, so that was something that something should have been done about that. Uh, and that's our position. He should have not been there. But, but again, uh, they were co-workers. They knew each other. But again, uh, 
you know, she had absolutely nothing to do with him and, and didn't want to have anything to do with him. And sadly, uh, whenever a lady says no, it should not result in her dying. How would you describe Arden Villa's um, willingness to communicate with you in this present time? There's been no willingness. Uh, I will tell you, uh, in my over 20 years of practice, I have never seen anything like this ever. I've been a part of some of the most egregious situations uh, that there is that ever happened. And victims, families, uh, police departments, they have all reached out to the family and offered their condolences. Mia was an employee at the Arden Villas. She was an employee. So more than, more than anybody, they should have reached out to the family and offered their condolences. When the family tried to call and say that Mia was missing, an employee. They should have been out at the Arden Villas with the family, assisting the family, and that didn't happen. And it's, it's sad that they are making millions of dollars off of these young students, and these young students to the Arden Villa is nothing more than, than a dollar. And, and it's sad that these students have to pay to live in fear, and this is what is happening. And I, I think what Ms. Debt has done, it has given a lot of students the courage to step up because I think many of them thought that this was just a norm, that it's okay for a maintenance person to come into my apartment unauthorized. And when they saw what happened to Mia, they are now realizing that this could have easily been them. And they're saying enough is enough. So I, I totally applaud the, the students, the tenants who are coming out here and, and asking for some protection uh, because again, this should not be happening. I think ladies, young ladies, women need more protection. And Darrell, will the family, is the family going to stay here in Orlando? I know you were saying the funeral is next week. Is the family now going to start heading back to South Florida? Are they going to stay with the body? The family is going to be heading back. Just to tell you just a little bit about the family, uh, the family wanted to be here to offer their support to the tenants uh, of the Arden Villas. This is the only reason that the family is still here right now, but the family is going to be, be gone back. So, all right. We haven't all that still. We have not gotten all that detail at all. Thank you, guys.